and international for fellowship recruitment process. She has also been associated with multiple other social sector organizations such as Atma, NGO Accelerator for Education, Evita Luka, and others. Last but not the least, I would like to introduce Ms. Bindu Johnson, the Senior Contract Manager with the Demons with a history of long working experience in electrical energy management, oil and gas, telecommunication, and construction industries at regional group. She is a multilingual contract manager with wide experience in commercially sound contract life cycle management within multiple domestic and global customers, projects and markets. A legally trained and an internationally certified promotion and contract management advanced practitioner with extensive knowledge and experience in contract negotiation, administration, procurement and process improvement. Ms. Bindu has successfully managed multiple large and complex projects and is highly skilled in contract and commercial negotiation, contract review, administration and management, risk, opportunity change and claim assessment and management during full contract life cycle. So I would like to invite Advocate Priti Varnashali, my co-host from the Mumbai High Court. Greetings everyone, I am Advocate Riddhi Bhanushali, the Chief Strategic Alliance Advisor of SK Associates and Group and Shavan's Focus Forum. I would like to request all the guests and attendees to kindly switch on their webcams, to inspect the webcams during the conference. I would also like to inform all of you that Ms. Vaishali Shri and team are conducting polls in the chat box throughout the session to actively participate in the same by giving their opinions on the polls. Now, I would like to invite Cecil Dagmas for an informative speech. Thank you very much for welcoming me. Um, as I was introduced very well, my name is Cecil and um, I work as a lawyer and mediator in Turkey, Istanbul, and I am also involved in mediation training with the, the team of International Mediation Campus. When I was first approached for this three-day seminar about improving skills and work efficiency, I immediately thought about the relation between discovering self and progress. Let me share my screen with you first, just a second, please. Okay, I hope it is well right now. Let me clarify this relation with three basic examples. One of them is about the existence of the universe. As you know, according to scientific researches, one of the theories about the existence of the universe is explained by the Big Bang Theory. According to this theory, there is one big incident that created all the universe gradually, time by time, and it created few chemicals spread it all around the universe, which later formed different elements with combination of the others and different planets and stars. Likewise, we human beings are constructed out of the same elements, same cells, yet we become different people. And our careers are started by the same education, we go to the same schools, we listen to the same teachers or lectures, yet we still have different careers. And how come this happens? Deepak Chopra explains this very wisely. He says that you are the universe, meaning that you have every treasure that exists in the universe inside you. Debbie Ford puts it in a different way, and she says that we hold a trace of every human characteristic that exists in the universe. So it gives me a question about how come we experience the same emotions like anger and frustration, pleasure and joy, disappointment and helplessness, dislikes and likes, anxieties and panics, yet we are triggered differently. We share the same values such as success and power, respect and beauty curiosity of friendship, yet we define them very differently. We perform the same careers, the same professions such as engineering, art, technology, cultural uh, works, linguistics, science, and yet we apply them very differently. Then it gives me the 
outcome that all jobs hold a trace of every professional characteristic that exists in this universe. You cannot understand medicine only by looking at some organs. You cannot understand law only by reading legislations. And you cannot understand engineering only by doing that. You need a sense of psychology to be a better man, right? You need a sense of cultural dynamics to be a better lawyer. You need a sense of art to be a better engineer. You need a sense of technology to perform art nowadays. You need a sense of chemistry to cook and a sense of physics to draw. And when we look at successful people, they do the same professions very differently. They have their own path. They perform their jobs uniquely in a way that is different, totally different than others. So we have same elements all around the universe, but different planets and stars. We have same elements inside us, but still we are different people. And we perform the same professions, yet we do it uniquely to ourselves. When we look at what is unique in our profession to us, we can go a little back to ancient Greek to see those two words. Know thyself is written in one of the old ancient Greek temples. It means that everything in our life starts by knowing ourselves. General Benson, who is one of the top speakers, most well known all around the world, he describes the element inside us as the point at which natural talent meets the personal passion. He describes it as element. We can also describe it as self. When we build up our career, all our talent and passion, we create something new to us. So not every lawyer can whine in their defense during a trial. I saw only one lawyer think like that. Not every doctor can make a patient smile, and not every doctor can run a hospital. These are two very different things. And not every painter can tell a different story with using only a few types of colors. And not every painter can use technology to show how different colors can combine. These are two different things. So we are different, so we will perform different. And we can perform different by finding our own path, by finding our own talent and passion. And this is possible only when we go out and search. Education is one tool, but it's just one tool and it's not enough. We need to go out and observe, and read, and advise, and take advices, and try and make mistakes, and fail, and criticize, and conversate, make conversations, and experiment, think, and try again, sometimes imitate, sometimes criticize, and get criticizations. And courses are one of them. In our mediation courses, I see that engineers, doctors, artists, lawyers, students, they come to learn mediation. And some of them come to learn mediation just to improve their managing skills. Some come to learn mediation just to improve their teamwork. Some come only out of curiosity and some come just to search for new careers. Whatever makes you to go out and search for new alternatives will create a bigger treasure for you inside. Because whatever whatever profession you have, you have all the talents inside you. But it's just as in the planets and stars, different proportions, different climates, different childhoods, different environments create a different life for you. So go out and seek for new talents inside you and improve yourself. When you find your talents, build up that passion and construct your career accordingly, you're going to practice your profession very uniquely in a way no one does. And that will bring you success and joy and freedom in your life. Thank you very much for listening to me.
Yeah, thank you, Sage, for your amazing speech. Uh, if you're done now, can the attendees ask you questions? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Uh, would you like to like pose some queries to the attendees, or like they can question you back? Oh uh, yeah, they can uh, ask questions anytime or after the yeah, yeah. questions. Just I'm okay. I would like to like to request all the attendees to address your queries to the Sage's government. Subhashree Nishta, Vidhan Shupande, Abhishek Tiwari, Priya, Ram Mohan Mandir, if you would like to address any queries, Janvi? No, no, nothing from it. Shravan, I have one question. Okay. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Dumbness, uh, is it necessary to make mistakes to learn and relearn? Of course. Um, we need to do experiments to learn something, and experiments invite mistakes. It's not possible to have one true line in our lives. Instead of this, the line of our lives goes with spirals and many ropes inside it. So we should be uh, creative and courageous enough to dive into different roles and see where they go. In order to do this, we should be uh, prepared enough to do mistakes and just not make a big deal out of it. It's just a mistake and go on. You learn something out of it. Uh, but uh, Ms. Sezil, why is it like that that human psychology does not accept when they fail? Like, they, don't, they does not accept when they fail. They make mistakes, but they don't want to fail. They want, it's like they have to climb the, climb the ladders. But uh, they don't want to climb the ladders. They want to just uh, switch from down to up in a straight line. But they don't want to prove, go through the paths. Then it's just the luck. Maybe the universe gives you a big luck and you can climb the trees, just skipping all the ladders beneath it. But it's not the way of going to a success. You should try every road every chance. It's not possible to find your talents and passion just like this. You need to try something. Maybe you try music and you see that you don't like it too much and then you go and try painting and you may fail at it and then you go and try studying law. Maybe that fits you best. But in order to find it, you should search for it. I can't imagine a life in which you find all the answers by asking just one question. Yeah. Is it is it a, a proper answer to your question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had one query. People uh, should try out to know what are their strengths and weaknesses. And people should try out to know what is best for them. But there is a, a social stigma where people fear to try out. How we can make that push or what is that push which is required for people to try out? If you get my question. Um, of course, in different cultures and different countries, education system may have different results. But speaking of my country, we are also not making a, a, a flexible environment for little students to try something and make mistakes. So uh, starting from our very young careers, very young education, we are afraid of doing wrong because we are tested accordingly and we are given, we are given a test scores accordingly and every wrong is uh, given a bad score. So this is what we learned during our little childhood. So 
it is really understandable that we are afraid of doing wrong because we know that nothing good comes out of it. But having this system does not mean that the nature works that way. So um, I think we, if we are working in a team, we can encourage our teammates to try, you know, just try and not giving results for any failures, mistakes, or big success stories. It's just a matter of trying and somebody needs a little way to open, you know, just the door to open. And we learn by imitating, you know, remember your childhood, how you learn to walk, how you learn to talk. It's all created by imitating. You imitate your parents and you do it wisely. So uh, it's the same for our careers. Seeing people who try in your network, who try and fail and try again, then we can imitate. So look out for the best careers. You will see that they tried and failed first. All of those really wealthy people, you know, the wealthiest, wealthiest people on earth. They first tried a commercial business and they failed. They didn't meet up Amazon in their first try. They didn't meet up anything in their first try. They tried and failed and tried again. So look up for the best examples and imitate from them. Whoever you see, you will see that they failed first. Look at, look at your first childhood. When you walked, did you walk just immediately? No, you tried to get out and you failed. You, you know, uh, you hurt somewhere in your body and then you tried again. And this is how you learn how to walk. It's the same. It doesn't change how to learn depending on your age. You imitate, you try, you fail, you try again. Just remember your childhood if you need any courage to do that. Thank that you. was an awesome speech, Sizzle. Well, awesome. Thank now, I'd like to thank Ms. Sizzle Demos for an amazing speech. And the people who continued from you? Uh, yeah, sure, sir. Uh, so, I would like to thank Ms. Sizzle Demos for her uh, marvelous speech and I would like to invite Ms. Srishti Chaturvedi for uh, her uh, speech. Ms. Srishti Chaturvedi. Hi. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Alright. Uh, I sent out the PPT that doesn't it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is my screen visible? Oh no, your screen. Uh, yeah, yeah, your screen is not visible. Alright. Uh, First of all, uh, hi, my name is Sushi Chakravarti. Uh, yes. I'm currently. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, Miss Yeah, You're audible. I'm currently teaching law. I have been teaching law since some time. Uh, the university that I'm working at right now is a part of the Sit Group, and we're focusing a lot on uh, skill development and vocational training and introducing that. Uh, from the education stage, uh, from the beginning and from the education stage. Uh, right now, we are on the world of developing a university which focuses solely on skills. So, that's going to be a skill university altogether. So, I thank uh, Vicky and uh, Shravan both for first of all inviting me and giving me a chance to express my views on the topic. Uh, for today's uh, discussion, I have narrowed it down. Startups, since I was told that uh, some of the people from our target audience would be a part of that group. Uh, I had attended uh, yesterday's session and I saw that uh, the ASK had been uh, already introduced by one of the speakers. So I won't uh, delve into the intricacies of the model, but we discuss it until the uh, order. So, uh, what is the ASP model? We all know that uh, the, this is basically an education model which aims to increase competency in specific areas. 
by how by they basically divide the discipline into the manageable elements which reflect the main ingredients what are all these uh, manageable elements or ingredients that we talk about uh, those are attitude those are skills and those are knowledge now knowledge in itself as we all know cannot be you know directly be transferred so the knowledge is basically transferred to transferring the information now i put a little question here or uh, as to whether the model should be called ASK or KSK. So, uh, a lot of people, because it just sounds better, we call it the ASK model. Uh, but if you really delve into how those steps go, you will agree with me as to this should be called as KSA model or ASK model. I do with the KSA model. So, why do I say whether this should be the ASK model or the KSA model? If we talk about knowledge in itself, what is knowledge? Knowledge is basically the, basically the condition of being aware of this, the cognitive processing of information. Like I said, once you get the information and you once you process it, once you ingrain it in yourself, that basically becomes knowledge. So you would understand that before going through the skills aspect of any any discipline for that matter, not just law, not just entrepreneurship, not just anything else. You basically want to have something on which you are going to base your skills, on which you are going to base your attitude. So knowledge would be the first step, which is the cognitive processing of information. What is the second step? The second step would be skills. What are skills? Skills are related to the ability to physically perform an activity or a task. So uh, your hard skills might include coordination, dexterity. Your soft skills might include you know, communication, application of knowledge. So all of these would be included in the uh, broad definition of skills. What is attitude? Attitude is basically what I understand is that developing the right attitude is a very slow ongoing process and you cannot really change it to uh, one or two training workshops. But what you can do is that it can be molded in continuous relevant activities as well as you know there are a lot of variables which might affect the person's attitude. So, at least in the workspace that you are providing or the work environment that you are providing, that attitude can be molded slowly uh, towards the more positive side or towards the side that you might want that attitude to be at by affecting the variables that you can at least have. So, you know, this is again can be very well understood by a very small example. For example, if you take the example of cooking, you know, uh, cooking is is a combination of knowledge, is a combination of skills, is a knowledge of attitude. But you cannot really be good at cooking, you, that can, you cannot be skilled at cooking unless you know uh, the basics of recipe or unless you know what ingredients are, what is it is, what test to is, unless you don't know about it. You can't really be good at you know, cooking content, let's say. So, uh, again, uh, if you go to the ASP or KS model, I prefer calling it KS. Uh, we go to the skill development part now since today's session is more focused on that. So I think uh, for, for just the purposes of understanding, we can divide skill development into four broad areas. Cognitive skills, social emotional skills, technical skills and digital skills. So now what are cognitive skills? Cognitive skills are basically internal ability to understand complex ideas. You know, adapt uh, effectively to the environment, learn from experience and foundational I request everyone to please mute themselves uh, for some time. Yes. So, your basically foundational literacy and numeracy, as well as creativity, critical thinking, all of that will be included in your cognitive skills. Uh, social emotional skills are your skills or your ability to navigate uh, interpersonal and social situations effectively. So your leadership uh, uh, training programs, your team work, self control, all of these programs focus more on your social emotional skills. Technical skills are the skills that we focus poorly on, on, on in most of your uh, in most of our training programs, which basically refers to the acquired knowledge, expertise or interactions or the specific set of skills which you require for your profession. And then of course digital skills, we all have seen, uh, especially during the COVID age, uh, as to how important it is to you know, be adept at your digital skills. And these are cross-cutting and they, they draw on all of the above skills and they describe the ability to assess, manage, understand, 
integrate, communicate, and create information safely and appropriately, and you know, disseminate all the information, of course. Now, once we've understood what uh, you know the ASK model is and what skill development is, I would now like to move forward to the next slide, which is skills training and development. So, once you understand what skills is, you would of course want to develop a training or development.
where I was working at. So it and you know this person got a better increment when I was working uh, 15 hours a day, but I did not get uh, the same level of increment. So it basically, what happens is it, it clarifies expectations of the employer. Uh, from the employee and vice versa. So you would basically know when a, when an orientation program happens or when an onboarding program happens. You would know what the co uh, company expects out of you and you would want to you know perform on those parameters. So all of the promotion increments become more transparent in the company procedure if you only stick to the training and development program. It enhances employee engagement. Uh, like I said, most of these training and development are group activities and these are activities where ideally the whole chain of uh, command can be there together participate in group activities and it, it, it encourages you to have more casual conversations with your employer and uh, employees in themselves also these are not just professional conversations so when you have such casual conversations you can actually talk about things that you want to work on share ideas that you think might be beneficial for the company and overall basically improves the performance of the company. Uh, next slide please. So yes, uh, like I said, this can be given as an employee benefit. Most of the training programs can be mandatory for everyone but as we discussed at the beginning, uh, some people might be more invested in doing these programs, some people might be performing better and you think that these people really should be promoted or given more additional responsibilities. So such training programs can actually be given as an employee benefit for people who are performing better, who you think are more dedicated towards the company and uh, this will again lead to more employee retention for your startup or for your company as well. Uh, it standardizes processes and procedures, I think this has already been covered in the previous points, no need to repeat it. It reduces the need for constant supervision. Like I said, as soon as you understand what the task is, as soon as you know the communication is clear and when you have casual conversations away from just the formal uh, command of uh, this has to be done, you understand what the other person is saying, what the other person actually means, not just the little interpretation of it but what the other person actually wants. One, two, you also understand that whatever you do will be reflected somewhere and will be counted somewhere in your increment in your promotion and these are the parameters in which this will be counted. So now, so now these persons not really need a leader or a higher authority person standing on the head to do it right, constantly supervising them. This person becomes accountable for themselves and therefore you know the need for having a constant supervision is cut down. Attracting and retaining talent. If you can really showcase, like our uh, organizers are showcasing here very well, that your company is uh, providing training and developing programs on specific skills, uh, the company will give you uh, opportunities to grow not just in the company but as a professional as well. Their training and developing programs are actually investing in your growth. You will actually attract and retain your talent, which has become one of the problems that most of the startups and companies are facing. Now the types of skills training and development programs, what are uh, the types? Again, this is not really a uh, constrained uh, list, this is only for the purposes of our uh, discussion today. Uh, the first is an orientation training. As soon as a new employee, as soon as a new person comes up in your company, you must have an orientation training. Uh, you will give them uh, basic organizational information uh, it benefits both the employee and the employer because it educates the new hires, sets them up for success in their new roles, addresses any questions that they may have regarding the structure of the company or regarding the functioning of the company. And they, can, you know, the period of settling down is uh, cut to a huge extent and they can contribute to the organization right away. Uh, an onboarding training. So, an onboarding training is basically an extension of the orientation training only. It is the process of getting your new hires up to speed, understanding the new responsibilities, getting familiar with company culture and becoming a productive team member quickly. So your orientation program might be for a day or two where it is only an introduction of everything giving, uh, given. But your onboarding training can go for let's say a week, a month or a three month program where uh, you can be tied up with a senior or if it's, uh, if it's a law firm 
the A0 associate can be tied up with them, A1 or A2 associate, and they can train the person to do them step by step and make them understand as to how things are going to function. Compliance training are the kinds of training which are mandated by the, uh, by the legislation, by regulation, or by policy. Uh, for example, anti uh, sexual harassment training, or diversity training, or cyber security training, business ethics training. These are trainings which are mandated by the legislation for your company to perform. You don't only have a choice in it, you actually have to do it. Uh, product training is the training which is, uh, for example, if you specialize in, uh, let's say, from, uh, giving coaching for competitive exams. So your modules, your specific courses are the products that you're selling. So you need to be thorough uh, with the product that you are working on. So that product training specifically focuses on that. Leadership training, uh, I, we are constrained of time, I don't want to go into that. Technical training is, uh, is again what we discussed as to uh, learning the specific skills. For example, if you are working as an engineer, uh, you know, learning how to operate a particular machine, learning how to uh, do things a particular way, all of this will come into technical training. The soft skills training uh, were not really paid attention at first for a very long time, but uh, most of the programs nowadays actually focus on soft skills training a lot. These include, like uh, Ma'am uh, Lurie, you know, mentioned in the previous presentation also. These include uh, training programs on conflict resolution, communication, problem solving, career development. So, doing a course on arbitration, doing a course on mediation or negotiation might actually help me. Uh, you know, deal with conflict resolution in the company that I'm working at, even if I'm not really uh, engaging in mediation, uh, mediation process per se. Uh, can we move on to the next slide? Yes. So now, uh, we've understood as to what uh, a training program is, uh, what is the difference between a training and development program. Now, as to how do you create a good training and development program, there are basically four things to keep in mind. Uh, Ricky, if I am doing beyond my time, please let me know. I'll wrap it up soon. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, there are basically four things that have to be kept in mind when you try developing a good skills and training, uh, training and development program for your company and your employees. First is assess your team's needs. Most importantly, you must know as to what your team wants if your team Things that they're good, they're already good at soft skills, you don't really need to, you know, polish their soft, soft skills on that. If your team thinks that uh, they're okay with everything else, but they really need to know more about the product uh, that they're working on, uh, you have to develop a program which focuses more on product training. So the first step is uh, assessing the team's needs and creating a program uh, which is more effective for it. The second is creating a plan. Uh, whenever uh, you want to create a program, it has to be the itinerary of the same has to be planned very, very well. Uh, the key business objectives, the core competencies that need development, and the action plan for achieving those goals, all of that, all of that has to be laid down on paper first. You need to consider the budget, you need to consider the size of the team being trained, the specifics of each training course, the actions that you will take to train and develop them, and most importantly, the resource persons or the training modules that might be required for the same. The third is deliver the training, what we're doing right now. Once you have once you have got a good action plan, the delivery part won't be that much of a problem. Uh, but you have to you have to ensure proper infrastructure for the same, you have to ensure that the resource person that you've got knows about your uh, objective very clearly and is delivering the same. You have to ensure that uh, the training session should be compelling, entertaining and engaging and you have to make sure that everyone is as invested in the program as you are. The fourth is evaluate the success of training. I was told that there is a feedback uh, thing happening uh, with the sessions that we are conducting today as well and the whole seminar. So that is the most important part of when you actually uh, deliver a uh, skills training and development program. That's not going to be, that's not going to be what you want to have to do. They're going to do it again and again and again. You must know whether the training program is a success or not. And for that, it is best to have anonymous feedbacks uh, so that, you know, everyone can be actually honest and transparent about whether that program really helped them. And if 
if it did and if it did not, how? Uh, can we move on to the next slide? Yes. Uh, Ms. Shristi, as we are short of time, uh, what we have left to okay. I'll just wrap this up in a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shall I ask like that? Yeah, sure. So, uh, once you've developed a skills training and development program, or when you're doing that, how do you increase the efficiency of it? One, uh, all other days when the leaders had to be or the managers were really managing the things, uh, there's, there's no longer a top down approach in any company, especially a small company or a startup. But you must, you know, encourage your leaders or people in higher positions to post their employees. They must actually be invested, emotionally invested in uh, whether the employees are doing well for themselves or not. Uh, the third is, uh, the second is that you must deal with the short shelf life of learning and development. So it can't be that you develop the course. Uh, 10 years before and you are running the same course or you are following the same resource person every time. The, the needs of your uh, profession have to be evaluated and the course has to be uh, you know, upgraded accordingly. Third is teach employees to own their career development. Again, as you can you cannot really you know, know everyone's needs. You can only know the organization's needs. But you can uh, encourage your employees to tell you as to what they want, you can encourage your employees to take up uh, specific courses which are outside the organization also, which help them in their own career development. And the fourth is provide flexible learning options. Uh, there are a lot of organizations now which are giving self-paced courses. They work better for uh, employees, especially when you're working in a remote setting. Uh, so serving the need, the, the learning needs of more virtual teams, again, you must know if you're, especially if you're having one which is working on site and there are more teams which are working uh, virtually you have to have specific different programs for them to understand their needs and uh, you must build trust in the organizational leadership uh, for anyone to be actually invested in your program they must trust you enough that this, this, this event is done not only for a compliance purpose but this event is done for uh, improving their skills and the companies go all together that has to be done and uh, this, uh, the last one has already been very impressed. So I think I can wrap up my presentation now. I thank everyone again for their attention and for being here and watching me present. My thoughts on the topic. Thank you. Any questions that we can take up with you? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, if there are any questions from any anyone, uh, I'll just wait for the questions. Uh, if there are any questions from anyone, uh, I'll shortly ask this question. Uh, I think I've taken uh, two, five minutes already more of my time. Uh, I think we can move on to the next one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's not a problem. It's okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Ms. Shristi, actually, I had one doubt. Yes. Uh, the way you were saying that uh, uh, training and uh, training programs and skill development uh, is necessary. But uh, uh, like uh, when it comes to everyone, like uh, there are a lot of people in an organization. So how to find out that which training program is suitable for which person? So is there anything which can, uh, through which we can find out that or a specific training program can be given and it, uh, it is to be attended by all the employees? Uh, so it, this uh, question has a two-pronged answer. One, there are specific programs which have to be given to all employees. These are going to be mandatory programs which everyone has to attend. Uh, but for other programs, like I said, there has to be feedback after the program. There also has to be a pre-assessment before the program. Pre-assessment will help you, you know, focus on which employee needs what kind of a program. And like I said, you have to give them more flexible learning options. So they can go for modules that they are actually interested in or the modules that you think might help them more uh, with improving their performance. And a flexible learning option can be given. Uh, ma'am, I have a question also. Yes. Uh, ma'am, you mentioned four skills uh, like cognitive, social, economic, and technical and digital. So, uh, ma'am, you mentioned four skills social, economic, and digital. So, a person who is lacking in this one must be. Without yeah, it's yeah. Or it's not having a question. Uh, ma'am, now it is clear. Yeah. Hello? Yes. Ma'am, is it all Yeah. Uh, ma'am, 
Will you just type it out in the chat section? Uh, okay, so Ms. Rishti Chaturvedi, you can uh, leave your email ID or uh, your LinkedIn uh, network so that uh, if anyone has any doubt, they can find it. Sure, I, I do that. Yeah, ma'am, I also had a question. Yes. yes. Yeah. Ma'am, my question is like, is it required for us to learn the skills while going to a proper medium and then learning it? Otherwise, I mean, other than that, we could also, you know, take part into internships or do some research projects or something and enhance our skills in that way. I com Which would be more than media. Yeah, so I completely agree with you, Kushi. Like I said, that if a person really owns their own uh, development plan, that is actually better because you know what you need more. The organization, however it tries, it cannot really know as to uh, you know, every person's requirement. So, the, again, the mandatory programs have to be attended to by everyone, but if you think a specific internship or doing a specific course, let's say a course in the hours and parents can help you uh, build up on a particular skill, you must do that, you should not wait, or you should not really, you know, wait for anyone else to give a specific point to do it. Uh, you should take it up as and how you think you can go. Okay, thank you. So I would like to thank Ms. Sishti Chaturvedi for her fabulous speech. Now I would like to invite Ms. Harini Desikin, Director of Recruitment and Selection at each for Bangladesh to commence her speech. Hello everyone, good evening. Just give me 10 seconds. I have some issues with my phone, oh, sorry, laptop camera and I'm just setting it up. Yeah, sure. Can one of you confirm if you can see it? <coughs> uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this session which has been very gracefully organized by this organization. I think the quality and the diversity of speakers in this group will be extremely helpful for each one of you who are participating today. Um, we have had extraordinary speakers since yesterday and we just had um, a ma'am talk about the different types of skills. I think I'll get a little deeper into that, but also add a layer of social sector and how development skills in the development sector work out. Uh, before we go ahead, I want to ask the group here. What are some of the skills you think are necessary for the 21st century? Just go to the chat box and start typing your answers. I'm going to wait for two minutes for this. Yeah, sure. What are some of the skills we think are necessary for the 21st century? Thank you, Cecil, for starting us off. Negotiation, absolutely. Can we hear from the students as well? Digital, technical, trainage. Thank you. Technical skills, job skills. Let's get a little more specific. Understanding skills, management skills. Thank you, Riddhi. Management skills, communication, digital skills. Leadership skills are also. Thank you, Riddhi. You brought up a very important point leadership skills, and we will talk a little bit more about that. Time management, software, innovation. Absolutely true, right? Um, one thing which I would want to focus attention on is when we usually say skill development, the overall understanding by most of the people in the community is talking about hard skills. Right? So when I say hard skills, what it means is ability to do a research or um, ability to use a Microsoft Excel or um, how do you give an interview um, and during the interview in the group discussion, what is the content you are sharing? 
the focus I want to take this entire group to start thinking about is something which ma'am also mentioned right before uh, my session. Is there two additional parts which are now included when we talk about skills, right? It's the importance of soft skills and mindsets. What I'm learning in the past few years is that without the three parts being together, having one of it is not going to lead to any kind of professional development. Skills and mindsets, what Shrishti Nam said, similar to say attitude, skills and mindsets need to complement each other to be able to create an overall development and enable a professional to achieve holistic growth. Let's take an example of a young professional. Okay? Uh, we're going to call this person X. So X studies in an engineering college. Uh, she is in her final year. She is, and the college she studies in is the top university of the country. And she's excellent in her content, right? So she knows, uh, she's always scored the first grade as being the top of first venture, knows how to crack all the exams, has, has been uh, praised by multiple teachers who are doing very well in academics. And in the final year, like many of you may be aware, uh, engineers have to do a project, they have, to, they have to do a project. And she identifies a problem statement, comes up with a brilliant solution of creating an app. And now she is now going to create that app. And I'll tell you what happens. And this is a real life story. The only subject she, uh, only course she scores the least in is this final year project. And let me tell you why. So though she was able to create and what this app, the project demanded that she work with a team. Okay? And what came out during the final presentation was just very evident lack of collaboration and the huge communication gap with which the team had. What do we learn from this thing? Does anyone want to share any, any student on the call? Just unmute it, share it's fine. Mary? Yes, go ahead, Abhiksha. Yeah, ma'am, what, uh, what I learned is like uh, having the uh, score, a good score, and having great maths is all, not always everything. So, uh, communicate, uh, communication with the team and teamwork, team collaboration is also a great thing uh, in a project I and mean, in everything, I guess. Thank you, Abhiksha. Thank you for being uh, open to sharing and volunteering to speak up. Yes, absolutely yeah, true. Right? So while the technical skills, that is the ability to develop the app, is of supreme importance, but to take the project to a fruit on, what was required was the sense of the mindset of a collaboration and the soft skill of collaboration. And this is just one of the many, many examples we see in the global workforce, which needs a combination of skills and mindset and not any of it. And hence, now when we talk about skill development, comes with not just training on a technical or a vocational skill, but it also has to come with the opportunity to build a mindset with practical experience, right? Let me talk to you a little bit more about, uh, so um, I think I'm on the other side where we are, I, I look into recruitment and selection. So uh, while Srishti Ma'am and Cecil beautifully spoke about the uh, theory part of it, when it comes to the other side, I'm going to tell you a little bit of what we've got to look for actually. So the current unemployment rate, which is there across countries, India and Bangladesh, uh, is, it indicates the lack of these soft skills and mindsets amongst the profession. Um, I remember when I started recruiting, this was around a decade back, my mentor at that point told me that, Harini, great, you're going to hire. And it was just an intern I was hiring, I'm not a very uh, huge role. It was just an intern. And my mentor came and told me that, Harini, now that you're hiring, one thing you need to remember, just get me the people with the right attitude. Technical skill is something I will teach them. Okay? And this is in a scenario where the, the organization I was working for was Nova Science and I was working on technical work. I was working in research and development as a research scientist. So even in a technically sound environment where technical skills are core, my mentor told me you just get me people with the right skill. I will teach them how to operate an HPLC or do a titration. I just need someone who is ready to accept that, oh, they don't know 
do it and they're open to learn about it right? and that is one thing which has stayed with me throughout currently as a lead the strategy for recruitment and selection of the youth into the fellowship program what we see is that most of these fellowship programs like right? the one in india we teach for india fellowship or the one in bangladesh we teach for bangladesh is present across 61 countries or any other fellowships like the Gandhi Fellowship in India or the Young India Fellowship for which uh, uh, I was a part of, we're not looking for people who are going to be there for a small profit. Right? We are looking for professionals who are entering into the social impact, the development sector as such. Right? And the sector in itself requires committed leaders. And that's why what Riddhi mentioned that leadership is a skill we look for. Very fancy to say that, oh, I'm looking for leadership and we have so many people coming and say, I have good leadership skills. But do we really understand what does a leadership skill mean? If you break it down, you will notice that a leadership skill is major, majorly a mindset and a soft skill builder. And leaders technically know how to learn any hard skill or any technical skill which they require. Right? And so working in this sector, the professionals who enter are in charge of lives. So when you enter, a, say, a classroom as a teacher in a government school, the life of around 40 to 50 children and thereby their family is on how you perform in your class. And hence, the responsibility of the social sector professionals in recruitment becomes much more higher. Unfortunately, um, as Tommy Wagner talks about in one of his uh, TED Talks, the culture of schooling is radically different from a culture of learning. And it's radically odds with each other, which creates the vacuum and employability of the young professionals. Sure. Let's take Bangladesh for example, and it's a new country I'm learning recently about. A recent statistic says that two out of every five young people are not fit for employment, are not enrolled in any employment, any education, or any training. And remember that this is the fastest growing economy in this region, in the world currently, right? There are nearly 10 million people who are currently unemployed or underemployed in Bangladesh. And in my conversation regarding with other org leaders on this aspect, nobody says that no many men. I hope you all understand English. Everyone says, Sahi no it's not about people not being there. Or leaders always complain about the right kind of people. But how will there be right kind of people? Because we never in our education built the right kind of people we need. Right? And in order for us to work around this, so even Bangladesh has multiple ways, you know, they're trying to solve for this problem. There are four different types of skill development systems. One is public, there are also private, there are NGOs, there are other industry based which include apprentice as well, apprenticeship as one of the students asked a few minutes ago. But while these organizations are doing the best they can, there are some elements still missing. And I, it comes to the very crux of it. If you look at the national skill development policy, be it of India or Bangladesh, go look at it. The policy states that skill development is designed as full range of formal, non-formal, vocational, technical and skill-based education and training for employer. Does it really talk about soft skills? Does it really talk about mindset building? And if my entire policy is going to be based on a definition which in itself is missing elements, the policy is not going to be successful at any point. The comprehensive definition of skill which is there in these policies is still incomplete. And it is basically the repetition of the entire gap which we spoke about between the schooling system and the culture of learning. And here is where the role of organizations which work in skill development comes in. Though most of these skill developments are from a part of employability, we need to understand that the skill development organizations also need to step up now. Do we know what does the industry need? What is our schooling system providing them? And how can we bridge that gap? We need to push, push people for development of mindsets, such as critical thinking, curiosity, openness to feedback, just the basic growth mindset. I hope 
a lot of you might have heard about Carol Dweck, who worked on growth mindset in a, in a lot of depths. But do we even know what a growth mindset is? And the catch here is building mindset requires continuous exposure and interventions and opportunities which help you create that mindset. And I'll give you another example. We learn teamwork when we work in teams. So that we need to give opportunity to our students to work in teams. If all our assessments in this current system is going to be individual, there is no scope of learning. And for example, to learn problem solving, you can't theoretically learn it. You have to be put in a problematic situation, in a challenging situation, to think about what is the solution to this problem I might face. And many of these fellowships like the Teacher of Bangladesh, India, Gandhi, like I was mentioned earlier, provide such opportunities to professionals and build these mindsets, right? Um, so, for all the youngsters on this call today, what I want to share is strongly think about skill development from a holistic perspective. Okay? Reflect on what are some of the mindsets you have and what are some mindsets you want to develop. When I am recruiting, I am not going to ask you things which I can find on Google. However, I will probably ask you, now that you found this information, what are you going to do with this? How will you use this information? And that demands critical thinking. So what I'm checking at that moment is your ability to think critically and use an information and not just give the information. Somehow. While the major goal of employment is financial stability, Please remember that we need to start looking at job as a career and a calling. We spend nearly 40 hours a week in an organization. And think about it. It, it influences the personality of who we become. But sometimes people have that mindset, no, don't have the mindset of growth, but they have a mindset that I want to earn money. So Which that really mindset affects a lot. Absolutely true. And earning money, if you, if you think about this, is important. It, and at no point I'm saying finances are not important. What I'm trying to tell is, while finances are important, there are other layers to it, which gets there. Many, many people, in fact, majority of the youth today, and including us, don't come from a background where finances <coughs> are the last thing. We come from places where finances is crucial. What I'm trying to push the thinking towards is while you look at finances, don't make it the only criteria for choosing what kind of skill you have. It is one of the main criteria in the world. And the people you work with, you become a lot like the organization you work with, the values which are uh, maintained. So reflect on what values drive you. Identify sector, organizations, etc. where you will be able to be the best fit. And so, once you have that answer, okay. then you can work on developing the skills and mindset that are required for that organization. So this basic thing is just like that, that uh, the culture you grow with or the organization in which you work with uh, can change your mindset? Can this Absolutely be... true. Just think about it. Um, if you meet someone from the army, they are generally disciplined and even in their personal life. It's not possible that when they go to work, they are extremely disciplined because military and when they come back home, they are no discipline at all. That's not how it works. Someone yeah. who's a banker, who's worked in bank and who knows numbers, does a mental calculation of finances everywhere. So if I work with a group of people who show empathy, compassion, who push each other, who have a growth mindset, I'm going to use aspect of it in professional, but not personal life as well. So when people say professional and personal life is going to be different, unfortunately, it's not possible. Because a lot of you, because you're spending 40 hours a week in that community, so your peers influence a lot of what you become, the way you talk. Have you noticed this? Some people who work in a certain, so meet lawyers, right? Lawyer, and, and after some point, you'll be able to identify, oh, I think this person is a lawyer. Why? Because of the way they are They're so confident. Oh, you're an advocate, right, Ruby? We will know. And you can catch that. And that's because we, we get in a lot of things in our personality because we are with such kind of people. 
when you are with teacher everybody teaches and you come back home and for those of you who have parents and teachers your mothers and your fathers will still teach like no this this is how it is done because that's how they do as a profession so this idea that you know i'm going to keep my professional life separate and personal life separate unfortunately doesn't work in real life ma'am but ma'am technically it's like a different you like for example if a student a lawyer for example i am a part of nazi money and i am being counted as for 5 years after 5 years i have to earn money for my life to change and after that i can't earn for like only skill sets for the practicality is like a uh, uh, very different with the two theory i understand like skills are, are very important but like the, the force of of money at present on on youth is very high you have to find some something to get the like the backward force like if i even not even not only like i have to pay back to my family my, my parents so i have got on it So I have to find any means to get protein like after five years of my study, whether it's coffee, whether it's litigation. My my like I went to for for litigation due to my burden. I'm going for coffee. So like the mindset changes due to the the load of the loan and all. So like the problems come in practicality is very different. Theory I understand is because it's very very like very near near of the time, but like the the like money is like very. Essential at present, both that like if it goes in at loss of loss after like like any any college, whether it's any any, they are trying to do public career. You have to be very very good money. Like money like comes at first after all the skills come after my own journey. Because I I think that they get what you are trying to say. I have two responses to what you said. One, there is money in social sectors. Not everybody who works in social sectors works. I'm getting paid. All of us get a salary, right? So that is one part. If that's what you were trying to uh, talk about. Second, when I'm talking about skill building and mindset building, irrespective of going into a corporate or a social sector, you need the skill building to happen. So even when you become a litigation lawyer, the skill of, like Cecil mentioned, negotiation is going to come in handy, right? So that skill building of communication, collaboration. Let's take something very basic. You have a client. You have to build that trust with the client, and building trust is not taught in school. You have to build a relationship. Nobody teaches you how to build a relationship. Do they? That is the mindset. The ability to build a relationship and invest people in your cause, finding that win-win situation, is the mindset. So, for you to grow as a litigation lawyer, you will still need these soft skills. And from going from a five lakh to a twenty lakh means career progression. And for that career progression to happen, you still have to develop these mindsets. I hope I answered your question. So you answer, but I am just saying that like I agree, these skills are important. But like the the like practical theory, the 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 like begins with the the uh, the begins the practicality of the of the life. Money comes at at first. I I if. If like I'm going to any any lawyer and like and if if I'm doing practice and the lawyer is paying me five five thousand per 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 month and it's like it's happened to ten years I can't wait for like ten years to 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 my skills I will find any other means to get more money. Yeah, but I can pay back while working. Who said that you have to wait? No, like like I've seen my cousins working uh, like in litigation. They are working like they are working for seven years. They are getting twenty k only for seven years in, in litigation. I've seen the like I've seen the uh, the seen the uh, what the it, it culture and you and when you go into corporate like they they at least they get you get forty k at least forty k per month in corporate the problem comes that the mindset of money sends us to a, a different path like I I I I'm thinking long term the 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 lawyer who who will give and more money than corporate but a sort of path like ten year after after graduation. The money process to go to the, the next part. It's the it's the reality for student. If like I will get into twenty four, then I have to find where I where I will go. Oh, Whether I I get into five years. Yeah. I guess you can nail your way to our. We just kind of share your mail ID in the chat box. Sorry. Yeah, right. So I'm on that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Children should not. You should never feel sorry for asking the question. We can just nail your query in an elaborated manner. So we will do that. I would like to thank Ms. Harini Desikam for her amazing speech. If anyone else has got any queries, Kushi, John Lee, Jyotanshu, Abhishek, Abilash, 
further queries please uh, mail uh, the respective speaker we are in a time constraint so sharidhi please move ahead yeah if you can talk please uh, yeah uh, i i would like to thank this having this speech for an amazing and fabulous speech so now i would further like to invite uh, ms bindu jhansi for her speech hi good evening everyone Am I audible? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, hi, hi from Singapore. I'm based in Singapore. As uh, uh, Shravan introduced in the beginning, I'm uh, performing in a regional role in a contracts management, basically in a semi-government -orga organization. So I deals with uh, East Asia, Japan, and uh, Middle East countries projects, basically. So I have a collaboration with the global community, basically. So um, uh, that's where. Uh, I have con connected with the Miss Polini, uh, introduced me to the group SK. So I would like to thank the group for having me here and giving me this opportunity to have some words here. So I was hearing from uh, all these speakers while they are vibrant and they have very effective PowerPoints and everything they will since yesterday. So I'm not sure about uh, how will be I will be competing <laughs> against the presentation and. Um, I was actually wondering whether there will be an overlap in presentation because is uh, there was uh, just general uh, subject line is given to everyone and we are across the world and preparing our own interest based topics. So luckily, I noticed no one is over overlapped and everyone has its own area and is perfect and uh, and my one as well. So uh, starting with my presentation, uh, maybe I will share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Are you able to see now? No. Not yet. How is it now? No. No. Okay. I cancel and I can How is it now? No. Yeah. See it, right? Yeah, it is not No, no, it is not working. Not working. Can we help or help you out with something? Probably. Oh, there is an arrow button in the middle of the screen. So, uh -huh. button from the left. Just uh -huh. click on it once. And uh, we get an option of sharing your entire screen or a particular. Yeah. yeah. Just select that and allow it. That particular app to take over. Yeah, I have. Then just do it. It might be taking a little bit of time. <coughs> Is it seen now? Yeah, I yeah. Not the people. Perfect? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, um, I don't need to explain much about the session and because all the speakers were um, well explained about the things I moved to my personal one. Okay, here um, everyone was speaking since yesterday about the emerging role of skill development and training program, how to improve the work efficiency. So, uh, does employee skill development is important? So, what do you think? Yes, it is important, right? So, in various matter, employees contribute to the business in many ways. That's why it's, it's so important 
for the basically uh, what the employees doing is uh, they are serving the company so what is ultimately com- company needs they need to have a contribution effective contribution from the employees right that's why they are paying you and uh, for your service actually then will that help to increase the business productivity yes it will make it easier for them to achieve objective that's the whole purpose right that's the whole idea about uh, increasing the skills and everything then uh, consequently the company will be more productive so that is ultimate goal for them right then the great usage of skills in the workplace and uh, why does it matter so in local and international basis uh, what is their ultimate goal actually the simplest answer is actually uh, to improve the productivity and their profit actually right uh, if without profit no company will sustain right so at the same time it will, should help the employee self growth and development so um, that will be uh, the ultimate goal for everyone right then um, i i am speeding up a bit because i am concerned about the time uh, restriction here so uh, stop me if i am crossing the, my allowed time okay, here uh, this slide will give you what are the skills needs to develop in general basically we have a three skills to develop functional self management and special knowledge skills whichever the area you are specialized and some of the great employee skill development areas are related to communication skill interpersonal skill organization problem solving self confidence skill adaptability and leadership role. so um, all these roles actually have a um, the skilled employee can give a boost to any organization to enhance its productivity and quality of the work let's discuss the best employee skills development things uh that definitely will be make you glorious and productive for every company excuse so, me bandhu i think yeah. you you have got stuff like as soon the google meet option if you just wish to the slides for slide yeah is it okay now uh let me is the slide visible uh no the screen is visible but the slide is not No issues, but you can stop presenting and you can give us speech. You know, I track this speech. That will be. Okay. What about now? Uh, not exactly. Your screen is visible, but again the slides are not. Okay. What about now? Okay, so uh, these are the this is the slide just now I explained. We have a three types of skills need to develop, which is functional, self management, special knowledge, and uh, uh, there is a great employee skills development, which are the focused area mainly on communication, interpersonal, organization, problem solving, self confidence, and adaptability. So these are the few. It is not the comprehensive list of the skills. Actually, I only short listed some of them, and uh, here. Uh, i was mentioning about the skilled employee can boost any organization then they will be on demand because they enhance the productivity and the quality of the works right so um, uh, that will makes you a demand a demanding employee in the company or any employee uh, organization who values the employee skills and everything so um, that will be the the next slide is a focus today is basically on communication skills because uh, the rest of the presenters uh, the guest speakers were focusing on many other skills and technical and uh, overall comprehensive type of skills uh, related and hr kind of uh, training sets and everything was explained well so i would like to focus more on communication skill one of the reason is uh, why i am focusing on communication because i am managing uh, in the global community and i have noticed many times uh, uh, there, there is a lack of communication skills within the employees actually um, actually in, in fact the employees are well uh, technically uh, uh, knowledgeable person but lacking communication skill that makes the employee uh, underrated most of the time and they are not really uh, able to communicate effectively what their ideas or transpire the ideas into effective medium 
and it, it is not uh, uh, getting noticed by the management and everything then uh, that badly affecting the employee as well and the performance uh, assessment also giving them a poor rating as well so um, this is not the one of the uh, cases i have noticed there are many cases from manager to engineer or administrative level so uh, I, I i would like to highlight communication skills can make uh, a lot difference even though you lack some technical skills because the, the how do you build the rapport between the employees and employer and between your peers and your manager that do make a lot of difference actually so uh, i would like to highlight all this uh, why is it important communication skills are actually uh, bringing in innovation and productivity so really it's a, it's a skill required by one of the employee looking forward to have uh, must to have skills actually so that will help the people to communicate in during the meetings or presentations and everything so there are multiple uh, things going on just purely based on the communication skills and uh, why communication skills are important because excellent communication is required and awareness for the awareness sessions uh, you need to communicate effectively otherwise people won't be knowing what are you trying to uh, convey and all this and knowing the purpose values and the role avoiding the confusion and getting work accomplished is it make it life easier right so if you uh, converse properly or communicate effectively everyone will be on board and everyone one will be uh, knowing what is their roles and the purpose of the The, the whatever the community you created and uh, at the same time if anything uh, went wrong or under under uh, way of the things happen is creating accountability as well so uh, employees with a higher sense of belonging to their workplace uh, they are actually more motivated and perform well also so if you are not um, well recognized or uh, not knowing your uh, the company's values and the, your role and how do you perform and you, know, you have lacking the communication with your managers and all this so that will bring, pull you down actually so um, as a newcomer or fresh graduates definitely need to improve uh, on the communication skills so the this will be boosting on your a lot of self confidence and uh, that will help you to work efficiently as well then next one will be Uh, why is it so important it will help the employee to communicate their ideas and concerns so this is one of the area you really need to communicate and it will encourage employee at, at all the levels to make their ideas and concern and suggestions to be heard so uh, if you know yourself doesn't makes you uh, bring you anything uh, good purpose or anything you need to transpire your ideas and concerns so that's the whole idea and how to improve it example a visual flow chart board can show ideas in motion that are in the process of the implementation of the base employee feedback or you can also consider adapting a high tech solution like a continuous improvement in software related tracking thing or whatever is a tra- transparent and responsive way so people can respond to your whatever you posted in it and there are many ways once you join the organization the organization will definitely will have some sort of communication platform you have to utilize it and you must know how to utilize that as, as well so that is one of the kind and here um, i take some uh, notes from the indeed indeed is a very uh, highly effective career site especially in singapore so uh, they have done a, uh, actually they did a survey and uh, some trainings programs as well then they come up with uh, what are the good communication skill to have must to have all these employees after conducting the survey and uh, the, uh, among the employers and employees as well so they find it um, listening speaking and writing skills basically in a three category so uh, these skills are necessary to perform your work effectively so that's the meaning of the communication skills so you need to uh, focus on how to listen how to speak and how to write there are three categories so uh, once you are uh, know what you have to do and uh, how to do, Uh, that will make a lot of difference then in singapore employers are placing a high value on the employees with a well rounded communication skills not only in singapore in international basis all the mnc's are really looking forward to have 
uh, with the right candidate with the right communication skills so especially if you are in sales or if you are going to a uh, like a training provider or if you are into a leading role you definitely need a communication skills so these are the examples and uh, uh, what you have to do is active listening writing skills presentation skills emotional intelligence space skills confidence conscious and clarity and respect you you should learn how to respect in writing or when you communicate verbally or in a meeting and how to behave in a way certain way or, or how to all these are skills related to the communication open minded you you must be able to accept if if there is any uh, new skills development required in the form of communication you need to be open up and friendliness is a you must be approachable by a personality that will makes a lot of uh, time easier uh, sometimes if you are reserved personality that will be helping you work, like you know or, or is not approachable or that will may uh, work in adversely actually so and feedback sessions so, and especially you could just wrap up with some cool tips yeah running the show yep okay then uh, effective communication uh, just now i explained well, how to do the effective communication and uh, these are the general uh, social communication tools and the internal communication tools within the organization and here is in conclusion uh, we we need to come up with the ultimate goal to organization will increase the productivity and maximize the profit so that is the ultimate goal so you need to look forward to how to improve your communication skill to help the these two areas and uh, uh, that will be the uh, value adding to your own skills actually then uh, the training can help you in doing this and uh, you can take the uh, various training online or physical training and there are a lot of platform providing free trainings as well and uh, uh, that will give you a help improve your skills actually. then if you are an already in employment your employer can provide you a lot of training sessions Uh, so most of them are freely available you, you should utilize those uh, uh, organization providing free sessions and everything some of them are uh, online uh, tutorial sessions and everything so uh, and these are the things basically and uh, thank you for the time and any question sir i would like to request the attendees to address any of the questions to them so we'll be very happy to answer them any questions i guess you can address any of the questions to come no questions from her ramon swidarsh pandey abhishek party priya kamal pradas no not the no questions it, it was nice i agree i guess your presentation was really awesome thank you I would like to thank Bindu as well as all our guest speakers for today for coming to the conference and making it a wonderful and amazing session for all our attending. I would also like to thank the attendees for again booking up with us for one point five hours. It was very interesting, but yeah, learning and development comes in a slow but in a steady manner. It does help a lot. Thank you. I would like to end the session with a note of thanks for all the guests as well as the attendees. and we would like to join again tomorrow at the same time for the last final session of conference report nine on emerging role of skill development and training program to improve organization from 7 pm to 8:30 pm i see thank you thank you so much you please like uh, share your email id and linkedin uh, account to so, uh, the chat yeah sure thank you so much thank you so much I request all the speakers to share their mail IDs in the chat. In case any of you have any queries, you might.
second is for making conference and a meeting session. You may leave and join us again. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you.